to Nita's excerpts from the experts, seven minute learning sessions with researchers and practitioners in the field of eating disorders, and for individuals who share their experiences and perspectives. I'm your host, Sarah Bowie Keaton. This week, our guest is Dr. Scott Crow. He is vice president of psychiatry for Acanto Health and adjunct professor of psychiatry at the University of Minnesota. His research focuses on the course, outcome, and treatment of those with eating disorders. Today, Dr. Crow will be speaking about pharmacological treatment of eating disorders. Welcome to the program and thank you for being with us. Thanks very much for having me on. So to get started, how is medication used in treating eating disorders? Well, medication can be an important part of treatment for some people. I think it's worth noting though, that it plays a different role than it does in some other areas of psychiatry in the sense that medication treatment is is really central and 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 often the main treatment for a number of psychiatric conditions that's not true for eating disorders it's it this field differs in the sense that psychotherapy and nutritional treatment really are the primary interventions and medication takes it can be important but it takes a somewhat lesser role and why is that um, it's a good question. It's probably the case that for a lot of people, their nutritional state because of their eating disorder is one where medications may not have as much effect. Um, that's particularly true for people who have anorexia nervosa. Um, and that may explain it. It may be that we need to build a better understanding of of eating disorder symptoms and what causes them and what maintains them. And that in itself may lead to new medication approaches, but we're not at that stage yet. One important thing to bear in mind for people who have anorexia nervosa is that we know that nutritional deficiencies because of restrictive eating tend to interfere with medications working. And in that situation, Clinicians will sometimes basically say, let's wait a while to start meds. And as treatment proceeds, as things get more nutritionally stable, then to circle back and consider adding medications uh, if there are still reasons to take the medications, if depression or anxiety or other things are still present. Um, but that might follow a ways after once nutritional stability is, is more in place. What are some things to look out for when medication is recommended as part of a treatment plan? Uh, well, I, in a perfect world, it would be a part of the treatment plan and not the entire treatment plan. Uh, what I mean by that is I think it, ideally you would want someone involved in multimodal treatment with a therapist, with a dietitian, ideally as a, as a part of some sort of well-organized eating disorders program. That's, of course, not always possible or true around the country. There are there are um, places in the country that are a long ways from specialized eating disorders treatment. Not everyone by any means can access those specialized centers. And in isolated circumstances, I think that medication alone is a reasonable beginning point. Um, but ideally, we would want to seek, it's important to have full, thorough evaluation in a multidisciplinary way. I think that it, there's some real value to having a psychiatrist involved in prescribing the medication. A lot of the medications that we use are familiar to all kinds of physicians, but one of the challenges is that for certain uses, the doses that we're, we know work best and are well-tolerated and safe are relatively high doses, higher than sometimes used for depression or for anxiety or things like that. And those tend to be doses that are most comfortably used by specialists like psychiatrists. Mm -hmm. Are the medications prescribed the same ones that are prescribed for antidepressants? And to some extent, yeah. The, 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 best, the best tested and best supported medications for bulimia symptoms, for example, are SSRIs, uh, fluoxetine, uh, sertraline medications like that. And those, of course, are used very extensively for depression and for a variety of forms of anxiety. So there's a lot of overlap. Mm -hmm. 
And it sounds like it's really important to have integrative care team treating an individual. So medical doctor, psychiatrist, nutritionist, you mentioned. Yeah, I think a, a multidisciplinary team is key. And um, in for the most part, we would not really recommend starting with medication alone. But the exception is, um, to that is if somebody needs treatment and is a long, long ways from any kind of, uh, of specialized treatment and doesn't have a great way to access that kind of treatment. When that's the case, medication alone can be a reasonable starting point. And sometimes medication alone, if the goal is treating bulimia nervosa symptoms or binge eating disorder symptoms, medication alone can be pretty effective. Um, but it, it's that's sort of like a fallback approach. It's not our first choice. Right. So if a, someone who was suffering from an eating disorder and they're getting treatment, if the recommendation from their doctor is to go ahead and prescribe medication, what would you tell that individual? Would you have them seek out another a, a doctor for another opinion or? Um, you certainly, it's always a possibility to seek a second opinion. That being said, it's very reasonable to use medication as a part of treatment. And if the person who's making the recommendation is a provider they know and are comfortable with, it's comfortable with, it's reasonable to proceed. Uh, the medications that are used typically are relatively easy medications to take with relatively limited side effects. But with any med, a really key piece is to, to really be thoughtful about judging after a certain period of time, is this medication helping me? Now, medications that we use for these reasons don't typically work in a day or two or a week. It takes some time, just as in the treatment of depression or anxiety. We really, for any given dose, you want to ideally give two or three or four weeks for medications to start to take effect. So it takes some time for that response to develop. And that's a really critical piece. We, as prescribers, we try really hard to remind people of that. Sometimes I think we forget. And in other areas of life, uh, other medical problems, most of the time, if there's a, um, if we're on a medication, it's something that helps relatively quickly. So this is really a, a difference to that. And it's something to watch out for. What are some takeaways for individuals and families who are watching this program and they're considering medication as part of their treatment for an eating disorder? Um, I think it's important to know that they can be helpful, that there are a bunch of different um, potentially effective medications, that it takes some time for them to take effect, that uh, they generally are medicines, if, they, if they're helpful, they help for the period of time that they're taken, but the, the, it's often necessary to take them for quite a number of months or a few years to get sustained benefit. Um, at the same time, we don't tend to take them as, think of them as lifetime medications that someone will take forever. You take them for a period of time and then get to a point where it's reasonable to stop and expect to have things go well afterward. Well, thank you so much for your time today and teaching me something about medications and eating disorders. And hopefully this is helpful for individuals that are questioning their treatment plan. Of course, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Nina's mission is to support individuals and families affected by eating disorders and serve as a catalyst for prevention, cures, and access to quality care. Nita offers programs and services designed to help you find the help and support you need. Whether you have been personally affected by an eating disorder or care about someone who has, recovery is possible and we're here to support you.